Welcome to What's the Book About? This is Warp Speed by Travis S. Taylor. This is the story of the creation of the very first warp drive. Set in the near future in the United States of America, we follow our main character, Dr. Neil Anson Clemens. Now he's a research physicist, karate expert, and mountain bike enthusiast. Now, we are introduced him for the first time at a karate championship where he manages to win the tournament but gets severely injured. Now, it's actually taking him to the emergency room that he has a hallucination slash epiphany how to solve his current problem, trying to make warp drive possible. Now, after a diatribe about the medical industry, we follow Anson as he boards a plane to fly to a NASA conference where he and a bunch of other uh, research physicists are presenting papers. It's on the plane that actually we bump into our other main character, uh, Colonel Tabitha Ames. Now, she's a former astronaut, and she's now currently in charge of the Breakthrough Physics Project uh, run by DARPA. And it's at the conference that the two are attending where we get a nice little uh, bit about the research community itself, and we get to see Anson presenting his paper. Um, after his presentation, Colonel Tabitha Ames goes up, and she makes the sad announcement that due to budget cuts, the funding for all these research projects is going to run out. Okay, so that's the spoiler-free introduction. Be warned from here on in, there may be a few spoilers. Now, after we get this sad news, Dr. Clemens goes home to break the news to his two lab assistants, only to find that Jim and Rebecca had been working diligently all weekend based on the hallucination slash epiphany that he had when they took, them, took him to the emergency room. Now, Colonel Ames happens to be in town trying to figure out which research projects she might be able to continue funding with her much, much more limited budget. Dr. Clemens has invited her in, and she gets to be there for when they make their first successful test of accelerating a particle faster than light. Knowing what this means, Colonel Ames helps them to find funding to go from the, this stage to the next step to create a prototype. And then from the prototype to work to build towards a full-on test device. Now, we follow uh, the team as it expands and they experiment more and build uh, the bigger machine and the better power source. And there's actually a lab accident at one point where Rebecca gets injured and there's this great moment where Dr. Clemens actually admits to Colonel Ames how much he really cares for Jim and Rebecca, how he views them as like children. And it's really touching. And we get to see Jim and Rebecca eventually uh, becoming a couple as well as Colonel Ames and Dr. Clemens. And it's really well done. Um, we also get to watch the team as they solve the problem that uh, caused the accident. And well, after that, they end up managing to build their first full-scale prototype so that they can bring it onto the shuttle to get it onto the next mission. And once they get it into space, that's when things go horribly wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not a spoiler if it's the cover art of the book. So, anyways, Dr. Clemens and Colonel Tabitha Ames managed to survive the explosion by getting onto the warp drive and getting back to Earth. Now, once they land on Earth, they find out that wasn't an accident. It's actually industrial espionage. And what follows after the investigation is a very intense, very short, secret little war between the U.S. government and the forces behind the industrial espionage. Okay, so what's good and bad about this particular book? Well, the uh, pacing is excellent. The build-up and experimentation of the device uh, is never really drags out, and the action scenes are quick and energetic, and the characterization and interactions between the various main characters and ancillary characters, it's really well fleshed out. The only flaw in that is that uh, 
Rebecca, Jim, and Dr. Clemens seem to have identical senses of humor, which helps the humor in the early part of the book where they're just the, basically the four of them uh, with uh, Colonel Ames there to work rather well. And once the addition of extra characters come in, the humor ends up still being there, but not depending on those uh, three personalities. Um, another, well, kind of a flaw, almost a plot hole, is that, uh, well, the spy that gets into the group, he gets in there really early, and it seems really convenient for the story that he arrives so early so he can get all the background technical information as it's coming out, it wouldn't seem really realistic to me, but it's not something I thought about till after I finished the book, so it didn't detract from reading it at the time. So in the end, what is the book about? Industrial progression. Okay, that might seem like a weird concept, but no, it's not the progression of an industry, but the progression of one idea through the industrial process. In particular, we're following the warp drive from its theoretical possibility through scientific experimentation becoming a proven concept and then prototyped, experimented with some more, manufactured, engineered, tested, developed, mass produced, and then redesigned and uh, developed for a second generation, uh, again for some more mass production, and we follow it through budgetary issues, personnel issues, industrial accidents, and industrial espionage. All from the point of view of the main character, and we get to realize that no matter what this guy was thinking it would do, and how it would change the world, it changes the world far beyond what he could anticipate or expect. And it's all wrapped up in a really exciting story with romance, humor, and all sorts of adventure. This is why I have to give this particular book four out of four stars. Now it's published by Bain Books, so you should go out and get it. Get it now. Till next time, have a good one.